Welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about polycythemia vera. This condition is caused by JAK mutation, and it results in overproduction of red blood cells. Now keep in mind the volume of the blood is still the same, but the content is increased. Think of comparing a glass of water versus a glass of milkshake. While they both can have the same amount, the glass of milkshake has more stuff in it. And so the condition is characterized by hyperviscosity, which means that the blood is thicker and harder to move around. So the patient would have hypertension and frequent bleeding. And the most characteristic sign is aquagenic pruritus, which presents as itchiness after hot showers. Other symptoms are erythromalgia, which are burning in the tips, and tachypnea, especially in the newborns. Of course, all of this blood will decrease EPO, and if untreated, the bone marrow can be exhausted, and the patient might develop myelofibrosis, or the bone marrow can overcompensate, and the patient can have acute leukemia. So two complications that are polar opposites. The treatment is mainly hydroxyurea, but phlebotomy is also an option, which is also known as bloodletting. So to recap, polycythemia vera is caused by JAK mutation, and it results in overproduction of RBCs. The patient is known to have hyperviscosity, hypertension, aquagenic pruritus, which is the hallmark, bleeding, erythromalgia, and tachypnea. The complications are myelofibrosis and acute leukemia. The treatment is mainly medical with hydroxyurea, but phlebotomy can also be performed. And here's a small quiz. Which of the following conditions might develop with polycythemia vera? And the answer is gout disease. All of the overproduced red blood cells can break easily, and they have amino acids in them. These amino acids will can be converted to uric acid, and the patient can have gout. Alright guys, that's all I have. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully this helps.